Hey everyone, Mandy here. So today, Mike does this thing with this thingy here where he, he takes it apart and he puts it back together. I'm gonna show you guys how to install new bearings and races in a two and seven eighths big bearing hub. Right here I have a Burt big bearing hub. I'm gonna show you first how to knock the races out so we can put new ones in. Typically with the smaller hubs, I would use like a Y5 hub, I would use a, a driver like this to knock them out with. Uh, I don't have one large enough for these big bearing hubs, so I'm going to do it the old school way with a hammer and punch. I took this punch here and ground a flat spot on the side of it so that I can line that up with the edge of the race. And I'm just going to tap around a little bit at a time around the race to knock it out because it's a press fit. And then once you get the one side out, flip it over and do the other side. You wanna gently tap around the edges so that you don't get it crooked as you're tapping it out. And I've, as you can see, I'm doing it over a wood block so that it protects the side of the hub that you're hitting against. Uh, next, I'll take a piece of fine grit sandpaper and just kind of touch up any burrs or anything that got on the inside of the hub so that it's ready to install the new races. Okay. I'm just real gentle here. I'm not trying to make this any larger because it does need to be a press fit when you put the races in. I'm just being real gentle and taking off any burrs or leftover dirt, grime, metal, whatever left in there. Next, I'm gonna unpackage my new bearings and races that I got from Superior Bearing and Supply. These are red polished so that they spin nice and free, low drag. I like to dip a rag in some oil and wipe it on the outside of the race and the inside of the hub so that the race will slide down in there nice and square. This helps a lot because if you get it cocked, it's a pain to straighten it back out. I'm going to set the race down in the hub. So I found this piece of tubing that I can use to try and hit this in there square. Okay, now I'm going to take an old bearing, not the new one because this might damage a new bearing. That way I can use that to reduce the diameter and use my seal driver. And once I knock it in there and get it started, I want to pull it out and check that it's going down in there pretty square. If not, you can take the punch and square it up. Looks pretty good. And then you'll kind of see the hub hop back at you when you've bottomed it out. It feels different and sounds different once it gets there. Now the front side of the hub, I have to get it squared up before it sets down in there. So I'm gonna use a rubber or brass hammer to get this, to gently tap this in straight. And then once it's flush, I'll take my old bearing again. And the seal driver. knock it down in. So the next thing you want to do is grease the bearings. Uh, the best grease that I've found and lowest drag would be Daylube, the nano ceramic grease for racing purposes. You can get this at Precision Hydraulic and Oil. The best way to apply it is with a syringe. And you can take the syringe and just squeeze 
a little bit of grease in every other roller from the back side. After you've packed the bearings, you need to put the bearing in the back side of the hub and put the seal in. Now there's a couple different sizes of seals for a big bearing hub. And the difference is in the inside diameter. So this is the larger ID seal and this is the smaller ID seal. You can see the difference. This is a Burt Forever seal. Very, very low drag. O-ring on the inside and out. Very nice piece. This is the superior bearing seal. Also a very nice piece. Low drag and uh, Viton O-ring. You need to take this side with the crimp on it and put it in. So your part number is out. And again, you wanna try to gently tap this in and get it square. Now I'm taking this piece of tubing and I'm gonna gently go around and knock this in a little further there is a snap ring groove that you need exposed so you can put the snap ring in. Now you want to make sure that you didn't push the seal in too far. The bearing should have a little play in it so you can pull it back off the race. That way it won't be rubbing on the seal. And then you're going to take your snap ring and take the square edge, put that in first, and drop it down in. Make sure that it's set in there right. I can take a screwdriver and just tap the snap ring into the groove. So I know three different ways to pack the bearings. Now the old school way of packing bearings is to put a wad of grease in your palm of your hand and slide the bearing down into the grease. And that's gonna push the grease through the bearing just a little bit at a time. Now you can see that it's come out the other side and you can continue to work your way around the rest of the bearing. Improvement would be to have one of these bearing packers and you can lay the bearing in here. Put the cap on. and just take a grease gun and it pushes the grease from the inside of the bearing out all the way around. My favorite way by far to pack the bearings is to use the syringe. It's much cleaner, you don't get your hands all grease and it's quick and easy and you don't get all that ex excessive grease all around the bearing for less drag and you, just the amount you need and you don't waste as much grease so it doesn't cost you as much. So once your bearings are packed you can put the bearing in the front side of the hub and slide over the spindle. Now I like to put a little bit of oil or grease on the spindle before I slide the bearings on and definitely oil the seal or grease it. I like to put a little bit of grease on the backup washer before I put the nut on. So this is the official tool for this particular Bicknell nut that slides into the holes and you can put a ratchet on this to tighten the nut. If you don't have this tool, you can take a couple of punches and just pry on it like this to tighten the nut. Now I like to spin the bearing a little bit as I tighten the nut down and then back it off.
and then just snug it up. Typically this slotted washer will slide on here and you'll use that to lock the nut so it can't back off. Now you can see the none of the holes line up this way, but if you flip it over, now I can put set screws in these holes to lock it. So if you want your Burt hubs to spin free like this, you need to get the REM polish bearings from Superior Bearing and Supply and use the day loom grease that they have. So hopefully you learned a little bit today about hubs and bearings. That thingy that does this thingy. I couldn't help myself. It's thingy? too funny not to. <laughs> thingy. The thingy, you did this thing. You mean the Burt yes, hub? Yes, yes, yes. It was quite informational, thank you very much. <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> Make sure to... Like the videos, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the newsletter, yes. and come back next Tuesday for another tech tip. Yeah.